This right here is the newly designed Mac Mini with a baseline M4 chip. It's Apple's smallest computer they've ever made and it packs a mighty punch for its size. This is the Mac Mini's first major redesign since 2010 and it shrunk in size down to, well, a handful of a computer. I'm used to being a MacBook guy, owning a 2017 Intel MacBook, then a MacBook Pro with the M1 chip as well as a MacBook Pro with M1 Pro. But I'm really excited to see how the Mac Mini compares to all of them, especially since the M4 chip is only a fraction of the size and price of all the others. I've been using the Mac Mini in my studio for roughly a week now, primarily for rendering and cutting videos. I'll be giving you my honest thoughts on the redesigned M4 chip's performance and of course I'll also share any kind of negatives I encountered. But first, let's take a closer look at the Mac Mini itself. First impressions are compared to the size, well, huge. It's a 12.7 cm rectangle weighing only 0.67 kg. In comparison, this is roughly half of what my 16 terabyte hard drive that is coupled with it actually weighs. Now, of course, since Apple shrunk the Mac down to this tiny size, one of my first concerns was the thermal design and maybe it's throttling of the performance. That's one of the points I'm going to look for in my first week of usage. Let's quickly go over the specs before we go into the first week of the Mac Mini in my studio environment. I bought the most basic model of them all coming in at 699 euros, 599 dollars and 999 Australian dollars. It's the M4 with 16 gigabytes of RAM, which finally is the baseline instead of the meager 8 gigabytes on every other thing before and this includes my M1 MacBook Pro. This also goes for the hard drive, which is 256 gigabytes. It's not much, but since I mostly use hard drives connected to it, I only install the programs onto the internal hard drive needed on the Mac and the rest will be used externally. So let's connect the braided power cord, which is actually nice, and install the Mac into my setup. Since the Mac is a bring your own keyboard, display and mouse computer, I'm using a 4K Samsung M8 smart monitor, a wireless Apple keyboard as well as the trackpad. Right now it's replacing my trusted MacBook Pro with an M1 Pro chip and 60GB of RAM. I will test both of them against each other and see how they perform. What I instantly like is the freeing of desk space that the small form factor of the Mac Mini provides. Since I mainly use it on my monitor stand, this gives me a lot of space back where normally my MacBook was. It's quite impressive how freeing a smaller computer can actually feel. And um, after a couple hours of usage, I have to say it's very impressive how much power Apple crammed into this tiny box and the form factor. The performance is nothing but great. And the videos I cut and rendered on the timeline are fast, they are fluent and it only takes minimal amount of time for them to actually render. It's been four days now of using the Mac Mini as my primary computer. In the meantime, I rendered some more videos I did and other than that, I was running a couple of benchmarks on it. And uh, excuse me, but holy moly, this is quite impressive when comparing it with my other Macs. Remember, this is the base version of the M4. In Geekbench 6, it scored 3897 in single core performance and 15016 in multi-core. In numbers. To get this in comparison, the base M4 that I have on my desk right now outscored the M3 Max chip by a margin. 3897 M4 to 3128 in the M3 Max. And uh, in multi-core performance this outperformed an M2 Max chip and is very close to an M3 Pro. 15,016 versus 14,842 for the M2 Max. For 699 euros. Now comparing it with all the Mac style I have around my studio, the M4 is the clear winner and is very dominating. Against the Intel based Mac, yeah, uh, it's almost four times the performance and as powerful in both multi and single core performances. I actually paid almost 3000 euros back then for this machine. Against the MacBook with M1 chip is almost double as fast in both. Against the M1 Pro it's still a very clear difference. Single core is almost double, multi core is a staggering 60 to 70% faster. This is actually not what I expected, a giant leap for a fraction of the price. But um, what does all of that mean in terms of real world performance? Well, due to the 16 gigabytes of RAM and the new chip, the Mac Mini now has enough power to run the upcoming Apple Intelligence without a problem. It can now process a lot more neural engine tasks at the same time, which also brings more day-to-day -day benefits with it. 
what that actually is? Well, better boot up times, faster performance and load times, raw performance in video editing and rendering, and probably, and this is really weird to say, even massive performance gains in terms of gaming. Yeah, <laughs> gaming on a Mac for 699 euros. This small machine now has hardware accelerator ray tracing for the first time, giving you more realistic light simulations and realistic reflection renderings of it. But um, gaming will be explored in another video, so let's get back to the day-to-day -day stuff. Opening apps was a breeze. Multiple tabs on Chrome or Safari, 20 of them at the same time, no problem. Photo editing was easy and fluent. Actually, everything I threw at the M4 was fluent. I almost think that the M4 is overpowered for regular users, which is a great thing. This thing will last you for a very long time if you are only using it as a stationary desktop for your business or browsing the web. Now, um, did I find any negatives in the one week of usage? No. The power button placement everyone is complaining about is something I really don't care about since the Mac is always on. It has enough ports for my needs and everything else I throw at it will be dealt with an external dock. I haven't heard the internal fans yet, so it's super silent and uh, otherwise when it has a lot to do, I'm always wearing headphones anyways. What I really like about the Mac, on the other hand, I can just unplug it and throw it into my rucksack with a keyboard and a mouse and plug it in somewhere else to work. The monitor is something I will find anywhere. Now since this is the base model and there are upgrades available you can actually buy, such as fast or Thunderbolt ports or Ethernet. Do I feel I had any performance issues without them? <laughs> no, not really. Actually, I didn't feel any change. So conclusion, coming into this review, I was actually expecting the M4 to be, yeah, good. But man, not as good as it actually is. Especially since this has been a device I would have never considered to be on my radar. Since all my Macs before, and it's quite a lot of Macs, have been MacBooks. But Apple really hit the hammer on the nail with it. And they deserve a big praise for creating such a small and actually mind-boggling device with so much power crammed into this size. It's the most compelling and affordable Mac I have ever used and for 699 euros this is the Mac to upgrade to if you are still on an Intel Mac or the M1 version. Also, um, if this will be your first Mac, congratulations, go get it. In my opinion, this is the best little overachiever in terms of price performance that I've ever used. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Leech and I'm off right in the next scripts. So if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to subscribe to this channel. There are plenty more of this type of content and many other things available for you to watch. Have a great day. See you around and goodbye.